So, Dr. Birch, you, you kicked off the uh, Connaught Summer Institute for Nanofabrication talk this week, anyway, with a talk about exfoliation, which doesn't mm -hmm. sound nanotechy. So, what do you mean by exfoliation? Yeah. So, the idea of, of exfoliation is to really is essentially to peel off some very thin layer from a bulk crystal, and the idea is that you could you peel it off as thin as you like. Right, in the same way that you might peel um, an app, the skin of an apple, if you right. just wanted the skin. And that's essentially what's been done with graphene, which is a single atomic layer of graphite. Where when you say a single atomic layer, you mean one, one atom thick or one, just about one atom thick? No, right? exactly one yeah. atom thick. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So what's the advantage of that? Why not have a lot of graphene or a lot of graphite? What's the advantage of having it really mm -hmm. thin? Mm -hmm. So there's a number of advantages. One is even though the graphite is very strong in its in-plane bond, uh, in other words, it, it's, it's um, very hard to pull it apart, it turns out it's also very flexible when it's thin. It's just like having the difference between a single sheet of paper and a stack of papers. Right. And so by having this very thin um, sheet, it allows us to make it so that it's um, both transparent uh, and conductive. So if you wanted to have devices where um, you could use them optically, like a touch screen, mm -hmm. but they're also flexible, this would be the perfect material. So, it, and you're working using that technique, and, and let's describe the technique you're using to, to get graphene and other stuff. It's basically scotch, you call it the scotch tape method. Can you explain what that means? Yeah, it's sometimes called mechanical exfoliation, so it mm -hmm. sounds fancier, but basically right. the idea is you take a, a bulk crystal, um, and it's a little like using a pencil. So if I took my pencil, which is made of graphite, mm -hmm. and I, I write on some piece of paper, then what I'll find is that there's some pieces left behind. And so that's essentially what we do. What we do is we take a bulk crystal and we, we cleave it so that it's got a nice flat surface, and then we just stamp it on some other material. Mm -hmm. And then when we remove our stamp, we go looking for what's left behind, and it's the things that are left behind that are the most interesting. Right. So you've done that technique not with just graphene, but other materials. What's, mm -hmm. what's the intention of that? What, what's the outcome? Yeah, so what we're hoping to do is to look for both new physical effects, to be able to tune these materials in ways that you couldn't have done in bulk, um, and also to explore you know, their role in devices. So for most devices these days, materials have to be very, very thin and very small. And so it's not always possible to just grow them that way. And so we're trying to find new ways around nature to make them in the sort of shapes and sizes that we want. So give me some examples of the kinds of materials you're working with. Where, where could this end up in you know, two years, five years, that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, our hope is that we can make um, a material where we can make it superconducting. What that means is that it has no resistance. So unlike, say, a normal piece of, of wire where when you pass electricity through it, it heats up, these materials in bulk are superconducting. That means that you can pass um, electricity through them and they don't heat up at all. So they're very useful for both um, energy efficiency but also for novel devices. And so what we're hoping is to be able to turn that um, capability of these materials on and off because sometimes you want it there, sometimes you don't. And um, essentially what we're hoping is to develop a, a technique whereby we could place these materials in devices where we could turn it on and off. And, and that's, that's basically the way uh, transistors work. And, and that's exactly the way a transistor works. And they works. change the world in terms of how we interact with electricity and devices and stuff. And this that's is right. a, a similar s level that's of right. change? So, it, yes, it could in theory be the same um, level of an advance. So um, the great thing about a transistor is it allows you to um, have sort of an on state and an off state. Mm -hmm. But the problem with a transistor is when you turn the electricity off, it goes that state goes away. It mm -hmm. doesn't you don't know what happened. And what you'd like is something that can do that kind of on and off, but it can remember as well what it came from. Right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you think about it, a hard drive, why is it physically separate from the rest of your computer? And the reason is we use different materials and different tricks to do the storage. And what we'd like to do is to be able to do that in one material, where we can do the computation and the storage at the same time. And if you could do that, you could make smaller devices, you could have devices that can be reprogrammed, so something that's you know, intended to be a phone can now become a laptop. I guess that's not so unheard of these right. days. But in, 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 even in that case, you have to have many ver varieties of materials in one, in one device. In this case, you could have one material or fewer materials in the same device. So it strikes me very much like um, what's happening with smartphones, like an iPhone, that you've got mm -hmm. a single device, but depending on how you treat the screen and the circuitry and the algorithm, it's a GPS device or it's a phone or it's a whatever. Right, right. but the, the tricky part there is that it, you should, if you open up your iPhone, right. what you'll find is lots and lots of things inside. 
right? So it's not that they've taken one thing and made it do multiple, um, been able to make it do multiple um, tricks, right? It's that they have lots of different pieces that can all do different things that just talk to one another. Right, different radios in there, the GPS radio, exactly. the Wi-Fi, everything. Exactly, yeah. or, um, you know, there's one chip that does the graphics, another chip that does the phone part. Right. What we'd like to do is to be able to make chips, devices, that can do all of that with a single chip. Right. right. So, for instance, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to be able to have a computer that the technician could reprogram how it works, mm -hmm. right? You need to be able to have a chip that's that flexible, right. and that's what we're after. So it really strikes me. I mean, years and years, centuries ago, when chemists, chemical or chemists were alchemists, they were looking to turn base metal into gold and, and mm -hmm. sort of find this sort of uber holy grail material, mm -hmm. right? And it strikes me that it's a very similar kind of thing. It's sort of a nanotech alchemy, right? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. And and in a way, you know, if even gold, it's a little bit mis um, a little bit deceiving. We're all used to thinking of gold as a really good metal and mm -hmm. highly reflective. But of course, if you make that gold thin enough and small enough, for instance, if you make it a nanoparticle, mm -hmm. you can change its color, right. right? So, in fact, nanotechnology allows us and provides us a new way to take old materials and give them new tricks. And that's essentially, mechanical exfoliation is even one step beyond that because it allows us to put them in devices where we could turn their properties on and off, which is what you really want. Okay, okay. thanks very much for joining us. My pleasure, thank okay. you. Okay.